In this video we're going to take a look at three different types of flip-flops, the D flip-flop, the T flip-flop, and the JK flip-flop. We will also look at some typical timing diagrams for the three types of flip-flops. The D and the D type flip-flop stands for data, and um, here is the data input. So what this flip-flop does is it takes uh, data from the D input and on the uh, positive edge of the clock uh, for this particular configuration it will read that data in and pass it on to the output. Here is the characteristic table so we're looking at uh, the positive edge of the clock because it's a positive edge triggered uh, D flip-flop and if the data is zero the output at time t plus one will be zero the, output, the inverted output at time t plus 1 will be 1. Similarly, if we input the 1, then at time t plus 1 we will see a 1 at the q output and a 0 at the q naught output. And if the clock is either at the 0 level or at the 1 level, or makes a down transition, then it does not matter what the data is, the data will not be whatever is at the data input will not be read in and the flip-flop just retains the state in which it was at the previous time. So qt plus 1 will be qt and qt q naught t plus 1 will be q naught t. Here's a typical timing diagram. The clock uh, is assumed to be just a rectangular pulse shape is like this one here. And for the D input, we have assumed this kind of waveform here. So sometimes D is zero, sometimes it is one. But the only thing that matters for the purpose of getting it through to the output is whether at the positive edge of the clock, which is here, where the data is zero at that point in time, or whether it is one at that point in time. Okay, so here is another one of those transitions, and here is another one of those. So because at, at the first uh, positive edge of the clock, the, the input is zero, the output will be a zero at that time, and then it is frozen until we get to the next uh, positive edge, which is over here, and here it happens to be one, so we make a transition to plus one. Then at the next positive clock edge, the data input happens to be zero, so we go down to zero and continuous, it's frozen during this time, so let's maybe show during which time this cannot change, so here it cannot change, and then here it cannot change, here it cannot change, and here it cannot change. So we have a positive uh, 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 a D which is 1 here and so at the positive edge that will turn into 1 at the Q output and then here we have D again 0 and that will make um, the Q output 0. And the Q not output is just simply the inverted portion or, or the inverted values of the Q output. Now here is a different type of flip-flop, it's called the T flip-flop and the T actually stands for toggle. And in this case, uh, the output is determined by what the current state is and what the value of t is. So here's the characteristic table. It's again a positive edge triggered flip-flop. So it makes, uh, it reacts to the input at the positive edge of the clock. So when t is zero, then the output is going to be the same as it was at time t, so q of t plus 1 will be q of t, and q naught of t plus 1 will be q naught of t. So the uh, state of the flip-flop is unchanged when t is 0. And when t is 1, then we exchange the q of t and the q of t naught. And so what's going to happen is that at time uh, q t plus 1, we will read out the inverse of what it was at uh, time t and the same thing 
here for q naught of t plus 1, that will be the inverted version of what we had at time t. So t basically determines whether we keep the current values or whether we switch between them. So we are switching basically between the values of q and q naught, and for this reason it's called a toggle flip-flop because we toggle back and forth uh, when t is equal to 1. So here's a typical timing diagram. There is again uh, the clock pulse here, and we assume a 50% duty cycle rectangular clock. Uh, that doesn't have to be. It could be a 20% duty cycle or 70% duty cycle clock. But for this um, example, we just chose a 50% duty cycle clock. So at the beginning here, we assumed that t goes to 1, and then at the time uh, here when the uh, positive edge of the clock is happening, we see that there is a 1, and so what's going to happen is that the change, that, that, that the state of the flip-flop changes, and q uh, changes for, from 0 to 1. At the next edge here of the positive edge of the clock, uh, t is still equal to 1, and so that means that we're actually going to toggle the flip-flop, meaning we exchange now the values of q and q0. q0 here, of course, is the inverse of q, and at this point we're exchanging the values of the two. At the time here in between, when t is changing between uh, positive edges of the clock, nothing's going to happen because during those times the, uh, the t input is not taken into account. Okay, so that comes from the table up here where we have a, a static input at the clock of 0 or a static input of 1 or a transition from 1 to 0, then t does not matter and the output of the flip-flop just remains unchanged. Okay, and then at this point here, t is actually still high, and so we toggle again. And the uh, q naught, of course, is the inverse of the q. This here is disregarded because it doesn't fall at the positive edge of the clock. And then at this point here, okay, we're now having a t equal to 0 at the time of the positive uh, clock edge, and so the q output remains unchanged. And then at the last uh, positive transition of the clock pulse, we happen to have a t of 1 again, and so we are toggling, and the output goes back to 0, and q is, q naught is the inverse of what q was. The third type of flip-flop that we're looking at is called a JK flip-flop. And the interesting thing about this flip-flop is that it now has altogether three inputs. One is the clock input, and because there's no bubble in front of that uh, little triangle here, it's positive edge triggered. If there would be a bubble, then it would be negative edge triggered, and uh, both versions exist. But uh, we now, instead of just a D or a T input, we now have a J and a K input, and still, of course, two outputs, the Q and the Q naught. So here's the characteristic table. It reacts again on the positive edge of the clock, and we have now altogether four combinations that we can have with the two uh, inputs, the J and the K. So if both J and K are zero, then the contents of the flip-flop are frozen, and at time qt plus 1 we have the same value as at time qt, and same for the uh, inverted q output. When j is 0 and k is 1, then the flip-flop is being reset, and q of t plus 1 becomes 0, and q naught of t plus 1 becomes 1. When j is 1 and k is 0, then we are setting the flip-flop, and the output go at time t plus 1 goes to 1, and the inverted version of that goes to 0.
And finally, if both j and k are 1, then we exchange uh, the values of the q and the q naught. So q of t plus 1 becomes q naught of t, and q naught of t plus 1 becomes q of t. So we are toggling uh, just like we did that for the t flip-flop. So the jk flip-flop in some sense is a bit of a cross between a d flip-flop and a t flip-flop. And it has the ability uh, of directly setting or resetting the data or uh, toggling between uh, the q and the q naught outputs. As in the other two cases, when the clock is static, either at the 0 or at the 1 level, it does not matter what the j and the k inputs are, and the flip-flop just simply retains its current state. And similarly, if there is a down transition on a positive edge triggered flip-flop, it will not react to that, and the output will stay uh, the same as it was at time t. Here's another timing diagram, this time for the JK flip-flop. We assume again a clock that is a 50% UD cycle uh, clock here. And in this particular case, before the first positive edge, so here are the positive edges that we have on the clock, and those are the ones where things are going to happen. Okay, so before the first one happens, the j goes to 1, the k stays at 0, so that means that we are setting the flip-flop. Okay, so from here to here we do a set. Then at the next positive edge of the clock, we have both j and k equal to 0. And so we just keep the value that we had at time t, and there is no change happening on this transition. At the next transition, we have j equal to 0 and k equal to 1, so that will reset the flip-flop, and we can see that there's a transition from high to low here, and uh, correspondingly on the q naught from low to high. So here we do a reset of the flip-flop. Then at the next positive edge, we have j0 and we have k0, and so there will not be any change in the output. In the next case here, we have j equal to 1 and k equal to 1. So now we are in toggle mode and the flip-flop just changes its value from uh, the 0 to the 1. If it would have been a, zero, a 1 before, then it would change to a 0. So here we are toggling. And it continues like that for the next uh, positive edge of the clock. So here we have both um, the j and the k equal to 1. So we toggle again. Uh, the flip-flop does not react to this dip here in the k input because it is not at the time when there is a positive uh, edge of the clock. At the next positive edge of the clock, this is 1 and this is 1, so we are still in toggle mode. And then finally on the last transition, uh, positive edge transition of the clock, we have a 0 for the j input and a 0 for the k input, and so the value stays unchanged on the output. An interesting question is how can a jk flip-flop be made from a d flip-flop? And uh, we could of course also ask how can a t flip-flop be made from a d flip-flop, or we could ask how a d flip-flop could be made from a jk flip-flop. So we just look at one particular example here to illustrate the process of how we convert from one type of flip-flop to another. So what we do in this case is we just um, make a Carnot map for the d input of the d flip-flop, which we want to use to replace a jk flip-flop. So the jk flip-flop has two inputs, two inputs, and a state, q. So we have all together three variables that we are looking at, the j, the k, and the 
Q, the current state. So that is uh, what we called QT before. And depending on what the combination of those three values is, we have to decide what D should be so that the next state of the flip-flop is going to mimic what the characteristic table for the JK flip-flop says. So if we look at the first entry here, if both J and K are zero, then we are supposed to stay in the same state as the flip-flop was at time t. And so uh, the same state means for D flip-flop, if currently this, uh, Q is zero, then D should be zero. If currently Q is one, then D should be one. So that gives us this first column here in the Carnot map. If J is zero and K is one, then we have to reset the flip-flop. And resetting a D-type flip-flop means that we have to feed a zero in at the D input, at the data input. If J and K are both one, then we are going to toggle the contents of the flip-flop, meaning we exchange the values that, K, that Q and Q not have. So if Q is zero, then we have to make Q a one. And if Q is currently a one, then we have to make it a zero. So we get this column here, one zero, which uh, is there for the toggle part of the JK flip-flop. And the last column, uh, when J is one and K, and K is zero, that means that we are setting the flip-flop, and that means that independent of what the value of Q is, we have to feed a D, a D equal to one at the D input, so that the flip-flop gets, the D flip-flop gets set. So that's this one column here, that's where we are setting the flip-flop. Reading out the values from the Carnot map, we combine those two ones together, and we combine those two down here together. There is no need to combine the ones here in that vertical column uh, because with the horizontal combination we already have all the values that we need. So the upper one here we have j at the 1 so this goes in directly without inversion and the q has to be 0 so that's j q naught and the lower one down here we have a zero for k, so we have to put in the k naught, and q has to be a one, so it's k naught q, and so we find that d is equal to uh, j q naught, uh, or with k naught q, or using the Morgan's law, we can make this into a combination that uses NAND gates rather than AND and OR gates, and we get uh, J and uh, ANDed with Q naught and then inverted, so that makes one of the NAND gates, and Q naught ANDed with Q and converted and ANDed and um, inverted, so that makes the other NAND gate, and then an inversion over the whole thing, which makes a third NAND gate. So this is what that looks like once it gets implemented. So we have k here, so that means we have k not here. And then q comes back around here, so we have here k not times q. And the whole thing inverted because it's an AND gate. And uh, at the lower NAND gate here, we have j and then q not. So this is j q not and then that inverted, and then we have the NAND of those two things, and that gives us, in the end, the required input for the D flip-flop. So in this way, we have over here the K and the J and the clock of a JK flip-flop, so this whole thing here is a JK flip-flop, but on the inside, we have uh, those NAND gates, and the D flip-flop, and we have completed the conversion from a D flip-flop to a JK flip-flop.